Baby, come back. Baby, come back. You see, James? And the plan worked. I'll be honest with you guys. I've been trying to get back over here on this account for a little while now. This is where I actually would rather be at is over here. But, well, what I wanted to do was show you guys the actual truth. That's the truth. And as you can see, they are going to stop the truth. So as soon as these, the, they uh, come on in here with us this morning, we'll start to study, guys, and get on into it. Well, I've been trying to show you, Andrew, that we have a double standard is what we have. Our standard is different, right? We're not saying anything hateful. We're displaying facts, honest American views and opinions and beliefs and are being hindered over it. Just like every single day, I'll start talking about my testimony or things that happened in my life and I get notifications coming up about how we've been flagged. I'm not no longer allowed in the FYP thing. Why don't you just say, Danny, you don't meet the tick not talk a narrative and we don't want you on the account. That's the truth. Why don't they want you on the TikTok account? Because they have an agenda to achieve, right? Well, so do we. So like I'm saying, why can't we just agree to disagree? How come you can't just put the gospel of our salvation, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, right there on Fox News, put the gospel of our salvation, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, on CNN, let a week go by, these people make their choice, we're going to heaven and you can have this earth and everybody will be happy, right? You want the earth, we don't want to be here. We want to go home, we're waiting on our Lord. We're not trying to stop you from having this earth. We're not trying to stop you from burning up with this earth. We're trying to go home. Yep. Desi, that's how, they, that's how they treat me. It's okay, though. So this morning, let's do 1 Corinthians 4, verse 9. We're going to back up to verse 6 for the context. When we get down to 9, we'll stop and we'll unpack it. We'll continue to see what the Apostle Paul is saying uh, to the Corinthians in 1 Corinthians chapter 4. Good morning to you, Kim. While I see Kim here, I want to let you guys know um, Kim has offered to give me Tuesday's nights off as well. She's going to take over on Tuesdays. Uh, so I'll still... Excuse me. I'll still still continue to be with here you here every single morning. Just now, I'll just be in the evenings on Thursdays and Saturdays. Um, every other evening, somebody else will be live. Just like tonight, it should run into Cat or um, Tammy. How did I find you again? I thought you blocked. Well, if you found me, Jonathan, then I didn't block you. See that's investigation. How did this happen? Well, Jesus Christ came from heaven in Acts chapter 9 and revealed this time of grace to the Apostle Paul, meaning that even though atonement was made at Calvary, nobody knew about it. So the apostles came together, arguing, should the Gentiles live after the law of Moses? In Acts chapter 15, Paul responds with Galatians chapter 2. Peter had the gospel of the circumcision. Paul had the gospel of the uncircumcision. They decided Peter and the 11 would stay in Israel and get them straight. Paul, Barnabas, and Titus would take the gospel to the rest of the world. That's Galatians 2, 7. So verse 6, and these things, right? And these things, that's what Jesus told Paul on the road to Damascus. These things, brother, and I have in a figure transferred to myself and to Apollos for your sake that you might learn in us. Where are you learning from? Learn in us not to think of men above that is written that none of you be pumped up against another. Puffed up against another. Remember, my pastor said, mama said, daddy said, preacher said, who wears the authority at? In the Bible, right? So some things in the Bible, it's not specifically clear. And then other things, it's very clear. So it's kind of like that song you listen to. You might not understand some of the lyrics at first. But as you put time into that song and continue to play it and play it and play it and play it and play it, you'll be able to sing the whole entire song. Anything you put the time and effort into, you're guaranteed to get results. You can remember your favorite song. You can remember Bible verses. Okay? Do you want to remember Bible verses? Do you want to battle Satan? That's the truth right there. You cannot battle Satan without the armor of God. And without the armor of God, you're not going to know what God said. The word is the sword. That's how you can defend yourself by using the word. God said this, right? 
that none of you be puffed up against another. Why? Because through faith, we're all children of God. Okay? We are all on the same team. There should be a certain amount of respect for each other because we're believers. Right? None be puffed up against another. They were using the church as an opportunity for a contest. To call somebody else out. To boast in their education or their big words that they can use. Remember, our Bible is written on a fifth grade reading level. Right? Fifth grade reading level. Oh, we did. I knew what I was doing, Conan. I got two options. I can deliver this message and stay safe. Or I can go to jail. Any other thing than this message comes out of my mouth, we're going to jail. Isn't that something? Well, that's exactly what the Apostle Paul tells us to do too. To only let your conversation be as it becomes the gospel of Christ. You know what? We're not one day closer to November 5th or 6th, whatever day that is. We're one day closer to that blessed hope. Looking for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. What are you looking for? You know, if you're looking for Friday, there's going to be another Friday. And a Friday after that and another Friday. Just living to make it to the day. Living to make it through the week. There's a whole lot more going on than just right now. We can change our view from what's right in front of us to out there. How do you know your interpretation of the Bible is correct? Because it's not an interpretation static. It's just called chronological order. That's called turning the page. Did you ever try that? If you turn the page, you can find out what's, what's on it. Very good, Preacher John. Amen, brother. Good morning to you. Happy Friday. You and your family are in my prayers, brother. So verse 8, now ye are full. How'd you get full? Colossians 2.10, you're complete in Christ. What? Yeah, you got Jesus, you got it all. So religion doesn't know what they got. Right? Well, I guess I skipped verse 7. Who maketh thee differ from another, and who hast thou that didst not receive? Now if thou didst receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou did not receive it? That's exactly what religion is doing. Every week, they're working their way towards salvation. They're never working from salvation, right? To the cross, after the cross. You know, sometimes you go up the hill, you get to the top of the mountain, and you go down, just like yesterday, today, and tomorrow are different days. Different days, different times. God gave us the sun and the moon for times and seasons. Who are the times and the seasons for? Israel, right? We are in the middle of a pause in the middle of God's prophetic program called this time of grace. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God. So at this point in 1 Corinthians, they were arguing. Somebody was saying I was from Paul. Somebody was saying I was from Apollos. Who was Paul? Who was Apollos? One. We're all one in Christ, right? So that's where we say, hey, now you are full. Now you are rich. Now you have reigned as kings without us. I would to God that you would reign, that we almost might also reign with you. Just like a Philemon, the runaway slave, Onesimus. He didn't get a brother, I mean a slave when he came back. He got a brother. And if you got a brother, you've got a partner, right? Because we're all one. So you look at things differently. So if you have a somebody above you, like a boss or a manager or anybody that's a believer, this would be better than working for somebody or being under somebody that wasn't a believer, right? Somebody that wasn't a believer is going to take all of your money, send it over to another country and then say, hey man, give me some of that money back in my son's account and ain't nobody going to say nothing. Corrupt. Remember, you got that hidden agenda. What's going on behind the scenes? We need a diversion. Send in the, you know, just like the Truman Show. A diversion. What are we looking at? That's what Satan's doing. Trying to take your attention away from that finished work of Jesus Christ. By putting it in the hands of these people that call themselves religious and that they're actually going to be the change that this world needs. They'll do stupid stuff like make a bracelet that says what would Jesus did because they're stupid, too stupid to read their Bible and find out what Jesus did. He rose from the dead. He said it was finished, but that don't mean nothing to them. Why? Because they're being taught wrong. They're being taught wrong in all 55,000 denominations. 
You're not being instructed to read your Bible. That means you're not being instructed to grow in the knowledge of the Lord. That means that pastor don't have your best interest. What's that? Standing at the judgment seat. The pastor's living his best life now. Well, chances are so are you. The pastor has unconditional love. So do you. So verse 9, for I thank God set forth us, the apostles, last. See, that chimed into me with the first will be last and the last will be first. He who humbles himself shall be abased. Whoever boasts will be humbled. Right? Good morning, Nate. For I thank God he set forth us, the apostles, last, as it were appointed to death, for we are made a spectacle unto the world and to angels and to men. Can you imagine you being an apostle in God's word that's been preserved? A spectacle the whole time is watching these apostles. Not only were the heathen, but the angels were watching too. The angels were watching man serve God. So for verse nine, let's go, uh, let's just do them one at a time, man. There's no need to get over. First Corinthians 1, 18 through 20. First Corinthians 1, 18. For the preaching of the cross and to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and bring nothing to the understanding of the prudent. Who's that? Nothing. Remember, that's what he said. Good day, sir. You get nothing. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, have gone about to establish their own righteousness. So God left them all in unbelief. Even though there was a small remnant of Israel that did believe, God concluded them all as a nation in unbelief. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise. They were uneducated. And that's because it's not about being wise. It's about trusting in that power. That, of that resurrection, that death, that burial, that resurrection, right? Nothing to the understanding of the prudent. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has God not made the foolish the wisdom of the world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the word by wisdom, or the world by wisdom, knew not God, and pleased God by the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. For Jews require signs, and the Greeks seek after wisdom. Which one are you looking for? Signs or wisdom? I love you too, brother. We'll be all right now. Foolish things of the world, like what? Man's wisdom. Science. That's what the Bible tells us. It's not meant for you to know the beginning from the end. That's for God to know. He's the creator. You need to know his instructions that he's given you today during this time of grace. Remember, faith, hope, and charity are all that remain. We don't need wisdom because our wisdom is not this wisdom. We need 1 Corinthians 2, 16, for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him, but we had the mind of Christ. Remember, we got one Lord, one faith, one walk, one Father, one God. So much confusion. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 15, studying to show thyself approved unto God, that workman that's not ashamed to rightly divide the word of truth. How do you rightly divide? Well, it's time. Our Bible is about time. In the beginning, God, the author, created. That destroys evolution. So go back over here. 1 Corinthians 4, verse 9. That's 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 20. Let's do 1 Corinthians 1, 20 through 28. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer of this world? Has God not made the foolish the wisdom of the world? For after that, in the wisdom of God, the world by wisdom knew not God. It pleased God by the foolishness of the preaching to save them that believe. For the Jews require a sign, Greeks seek after wisdom, but we preach Christ crucified unto the Jews a stumbling block and unto the Greeks foolishness. 
but unto them which are called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God, because the foolishness of God is wiser than men, and the weakness of God is stronger than men. For you see your calling, brethren, how not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called, but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, and God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. It sounds like love to me. Love. And base the things of the world which are not to bring to not the things that are, that no flesh should glory in his presence. But of him are ye in Christ Jesus, who of God is made unto us wisdom and righteousness, sanctification and redemption. According as it is written, he that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. He that glorieth, let him glory in the Lord. All right, so that's 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 20 and 20 through 28. So you can just write 1 Corinthians 1, 18 through 28. Pretty much the whole entire chapter is what we just did. So let's go over to 2 Corinthians. Let's do 2 Corinthians 9. 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Verse 10. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food. Bread. That's what we're giving you. We are feeding the spirits. Now he that ministers seed to the sower, both minister bread for your food and multiply your seed sown and increase the fruits of your righteousness, being enriched in everything to all what bountifulness which causes through us thanksgiving to God. Thanksgiving. You know how many people are praying for God without thanksgiving? Praying for God, always asking for something. I need enough money to make it till Friday, God. God, I need a trailer. God, I need a new minor saw. God, I need a truck. God don't hear those things, right? He don't care if you walk or if you have a truck. He cares if you're saved. He don't care what bus stop you're standing at. He don't love you because you got a car and somebody else is at a bus stop. Okay? You got a truck because why? You worked hard. You saved up your money. You bought it. Somebody else hadn't saved up that money yet. So what are they doing? They're saving up for an electric scooter or they're saving up for a bus pass. One of the two. Maybe somebody else might be Ubering it or riding a cab if you lived in the old days. What does it mean? Either way, you're paying. Either way. You're either paying a $400 a month car payment with $150 insurance. Or you're riding a bus. Walking everywhere you go. See, the difference is you don't have control. See, this is what they're trying to stop in that car. As long as that car is running off of gasoline, you have what we call freedom. You can floor that bad boy if you want to. What they're trying to do is be able to run up behind you and shut that whole car down. You ain't doing nothing. That's where over in California, they were coming up with those LED or the digital license plates. That's another time though, guys. Let's keep going. Go over to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. We're going to look at 19 and 29. 2 Corinthians 11. We looked at this last night. Verse 19, for ye suffer fools gladly, seeing yourselves are wise. When you see somebody that's younger than you are trying to grow in the knowledge of the Lord, doing everything they can to grow, but even though they might be asking childish questions, we suffer them gladly is what we do. I see you trying. I see you growing. Ooh, you're finally thinking. We know where you are because we've been there. I know what it's like not to have the answers. I know what it's like not to know how to find the answers. You keep searching and you search with all your heart. And when you search with all your heart, guys, that's when you're going to find it. Go down to 29 of Romans, I mean of 2 Corinthians 11. Who is weak and I am not weak? Who is offended and I burn not? If I must needs, I glory of the things which confirm my infirmities. What? 
Who is weak and I am not weak. Doesn't when one joys, rejoice, we all rejoice. When one mourns, we all mourn. I want y'all to keep our brother prayer, uh, Richard River Junkies, um, in your prayers this morning, guys. Uh, he's going through a housing uh, situation. Well, Brother Bob, what I need to explain to you is you found it. You don't need to search no more. You found it. Now what do you need to do? Learn the doctrine. So you imagine somebody going, hey, you need to find it. What are they finding? You found the right book. Now what? We need to find the right doctrine. After we find the right doctrine, then we what? Then you need to learn how to memorize it. Memorize it. When you memorize it, that's going to take over those other thoughts that are going on in your mind and in your head. This is how come I'm quoting scripture all night long in my sleep and somebody else is being attacked by nightmares. Nightmares. Do you know who you are? Very good, Jen. Very good. Good morning to you. So that 2 Corinthians 11, 29, 2 Corinthians eleven nineteen. Let's do 2 Corinthians 12, 2 Corinthians 12, and we're going to do 9 and 10, 2 Corinthians 12, verses 9 and 10. He said unto me, my grace is sufficient for thee. My strength is made perfect in weakness. My strength is made perfect perfect in weakness. Good morning to you, brother. Most gladly, therefore, I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Rest upon me. And that's what we're doing. We're resting. We're resting. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then I am strong. I am become a fool in glory, and you have compelled me, for I ought to have been commended of you, for in nothing I am behind the very chiefest apostles, though I be nothing. Only I'm nothing, but I'm showing you the finished work of Jesus Christ, which is just happens to be the most valuable information that you'll ever discover on this earth. When you can truly come to terms with what took place at, Cal at Calvary, then you can know for a fact that your salvation is secure, that you're saved. When you start walking around being saved versus walking around not knowing that you're saved. Remember, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. That amazing grace, right, continues to abound. Even when man's love does it, when man wants to turn his back on us, God's love continues to abound. Let's do 2 Corinthians 13, 3 through 4. Since you seek proof of Christ speaking in me, which to you word is not weak, but is mighty in you, for though he was crucified through weakness, yet he liveth by the power of God. We... For we are also are weak in him, but we shall live with him by the power of God toward you. Examine yourselves, whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves, how that Christ Jesus is in you, except you be reprobates. But I trust that you shall know that we are not reprobates. Not rapper base. You know you got Christ in you. Remember, godliness with contention is great gain. Just knowing you've got the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead inside of you is going to bring you comfort. Let's do 1 Thessalonians 4. 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 8. He therefore that despises, despises not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. But as touching brotherly love, you need not that I write unto you, for you yourselves are taught of God to love one another. All right, that takes us down to 1 Corinthians 4, verse 9. I'm sorry, verse 10. Verse 10. I still got a... Uh, couple more I can throw at you for verse 9. Add these on to verse 9. 2 Corinthians 1, 8 through 10. 
Romans 8.36, and also 2 Corinthians 4, 8 through 12. That takes us down to verse 10. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Let's do 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 3. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus and him crucified. Crucified. We're preaching Christ crucified. But 55,000 denominations are still walking the earth with Jesus in his earthly ministry before he died. What does that mean? They're under the law. You mean your pastor doesn't know the difference from law and grace? I might could understand 10 different denominations. 10 different, not 55,000 denominations. 55,000 denominations reading from 3,000 different Bibles. That's nothing short of confusion. Amen, Steve. You're fired. Lest you know you got Christ in you, you're fired. You got it? You're fired. It's in this book. You got a degree on your wall? You don't know you got Christ in you? You're fired. That kind of changes things, doesn't it? We're not like the chosen trying to be a disciple. We've got Christ with us. What? Yeah, remember, are you so foolish? For who make thee differ from another? Try that Holy Spirit. And what hast thou that didst not receive? Salvation. And now if thou did receive it, why dost thou glory as if thou had not received it? Rejoice. Remember, the gates open. Get up and walk out. You are full. You are rich. You have reigned as kings. You've got Jesus. You've got it all. He pulled up on you fishing? Did he catch anything? <laughs> that's, that's what they say. You know, what happened when Jesus walked over to the fish? It was money inside of the fish's mouth. What do you mean? We could just go fishing and pay all our bills. See, things that God had for the nation of Israel are a little bit different than what's going on with you and me today. I can go fishing all day long like our brother Richie. I ain't gonna find one dime in no fish's mouth. Maybe you could take the fish and turn it in for a sandwich. That's what happened down at Outer Banks. We went out deep sea fishing about five to seven miles off the coast of Outer Banks. Uh, went mahi-mahi. I got some tuners, and I caught a big wahoo out there, and we came back down to that Dirty Dicks crab, sh crab shack down there and uh, sold all the fish to them. So I was like, man, it paid for half of my fishing trip, so I actually had a good time. So I was like, man, that was really cool that they would be willing to take the food, uh, the fish that we caught and sell it in their restaurant. Fresh fish that, that, that evening. I thought that was awesome. So for verse 10, we are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. That was 1 Corinthians 2, 3. Let's go look at 2 Corinthians 13, 9, which we already read it, but we'll read it again. 2 Corinthians 13, 9. 2 Corinthians 13, 9. For we are glad when we are weak, and ye are strong, and this we also wish, even your perfection. See that perfection? Wherefore, therefore I write these things, being absent, lest being present, I should use sharpness, according to the power which the Lord has given me, to edification and not to destruction. Building you up. What? That's where Paul said, being absent, lest present, I should use sharpness. Sharpness. How do you think it made Peter feel when the Lord said, get behind me, Satan? Right? So back over to 1 Corinthians chapter 4. AJ, we're over here in 1 Corinthians 4 um, this morning. We're in verse uh, 10, but we're getting ready to go down to verse 11. You're welcome to join us. You know, we're not on the Daniel side of the cross. We're on the grace side of the cross. You know, Hebrews 9 tells us that the testament don't come into effect until the death of the testator. 
that test that testator is Jesus Christ. That testament is Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. So the New Testament officially begins with the death of the testator, with the death of Jesus Christ. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are under the law. What happens if you're under the law? You need to live by all the law, right? Well, that's why you're back over there in, in Daniel, chapter one, verses one through two. Steadfast ye the liberty and not be entangled with the yoke of bondage. What's the yoke of bondage? Try the law. All right, verse 11. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Well, we know they're not Pentecostal. They don't drive an Audi. You got a big old hat, Dol Dolas and Cabana suit. This is Holy Bible. Holy. That's first. That's Second Corinthians thirteen nine. It said even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are pre and are naked and buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place. Job chapter twenty two verse six. Write that down. That was Job 22, verse 6. I've got 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 27. We already read that, so write it down, okay? 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 27. I think we read somewhere around, what was it, 12 through 28? We read, we read all, all of it. Let's do 2 Corinthians 6, verses 4 through 5. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God in much patience, in afflictions, necessities, and distresses. You see that? We're approving ourselves as ministers. We're not approving ourselves as reverends or deacons, bishops, scoutmaster. You're an ambassador. That means you're a representative of our Lord and Savior in stripes, imprisonments, in torments, in labors, in watchings, in fastings, by pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by the love unfreighted. Note, there was no shandalala shaka in that passage. Your word should hold value. Shandalala shika holds no value. What holds value? God was in Christ reconciling the world. No longer imputing their trespasses unto them and has committed unto us the message of reconciliation. Did you get it? You got a message of reconciliation now. You don't need to shun the la la sheep God no more. You need to be telling people about this finished work of Jesus Christ or what? You're going to burn up. You're going to burn up. Where? At that judgment seat. This was the problem that I had when I came onto the platform. They said, Danny, we know you know what you're talking about, but I don't know what you're talking about. You mean I came across somebody that was being taught how to rightly divide the word of truth and they weren't being prepared for the judgment seat? They didn't even know about the judgment seat. Why would somebody withhold that information? In the day, God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my gospel. You know what that means? If you can't prepare your members for the judgment seat, then obviously you don't know what took place at Calvary. When you're sitting here telling people that they're not forgiven until they believe, that takes away from this message of reconciliation. Ding, 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 ding. How come you don't know about the judgment seat of Christ? Well, number one, you're listening to this nonsense instead of reading the Bible. If you read the Bible as much as you pounded your weights over there, you might get built up in the Lord and Danny wouldn't have to come correct you. That's why Danny's blocked. I mean, I mean, really. Yeah, yep. First Corinthians four, verse eleven. Still, that was Second Corinthians six, verses four through five. Let's do Second Timothy three, verse eleven. Second Timothy three. 
verse 11. Persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconium, at Lystra. What per, what's that? Persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and will all, all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Persecution, right? You mean you believe in this, Jesus? Yeah, but continue in the things which thou hast learned and thou hast been assured of, knowing whom thou hast learned them. Who's preparing you for that judgment seat? Paul? Oh. So you say, hey, right here in verse 15. And from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith. See that word, through faith? That's Romans 3.30 right there. Through faith, which is where? In Christ Jesus. Let's do 1 Corinthians 4 again. That was 2 Corinthians 6, 4 through 5, 2 Timothy 3, 11. We already looked at 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 27. I asked you to write down Job 22, 16. Let's do Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. I know how both to be abased and how to abound everywhere in all things. I'm instructed both to be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ with strength in me. Notwithstanding ye have done well that ye did communicate with my afflictions. Now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me as in concerning giving, receiving, but ye only. You know that? You can talk to people about paying tithes and pound them down with how they're robbing God and they'll give. But you talk about that finished work of Jesus Christ. Nobody wants to give anymore. I don't have to give anymore, right? What are you giving to? Your ministry, not my ministry, your ministry. You need tracks, you need stamps, you need envelopes, you need charts, okay? That's how you can start your ministry. You don't give to some church building. God don't even dwell in man-made buildings. He dwells right there inside of the believer. So that's where Paul was talking about. In the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me. They weren't sure yet. What's going on with Paul? All of a sudden now, we've heard Paul's been converted. The one that once persecuted us in times past now preaches the message he once destroyed. So no church communicated with Paul. It was scared of Paul is what they was. To go back to verse 11, that's Philippians 4, 12. Let's do Romans chapter 8, verse 35. Romans 8, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress? Shall persecution or famine? Nakedness or pearl or sword? As it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay. Nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. More than a conqueror. You're not a sheep. What are you? Flesh of his flesh. Bone of his bone. Members of his body. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 11. What in the world? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. Y'all seen the, the little TikTok video of the dude walking out there and all the arrows coming in the sky and him just standing there and none of the arrows touching him? You've got a job to do. Do you understand what I'm trying to tell you? That come hella high water, you're going to achieve the goal that Jesus Christ has for you, even if he's got to stop all the arrows in the sky.
Nothing can stop us. Remember, we've got God. And if God be for us, then who can be against us? Nobody. The losers are against us. You're the loser. We're the winners. You're the loser. So we go back over to verse 11 again. That was 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 8. I think we pretty much got it. So I'm just going to recap verse 11. Recap verse 11. Romans 8, 35. Probably need to move this up a little bit. So I can see. So I can see you can have some real lifetime interaction with you guys out there. Hey, man. It's Cigarette Stanley. Ooh, Cigarette Stanley. Did you know all the cigarettes in the whole world, Stanley can't keep you from the love of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? Did you know that, man? Do you smoke menthols or full flavors? Maybe you smoke the 50-50s. What are they called? Lights. Maybe you smoke lights. That's why I was like, cotton balls smoke lights. If you're going to smoke, smoke a real cigarette. Non-filter camel. Do it right. You know, Jesus, well, praise the Lord, brother. Welcome to our Bible study. We're in 1 Corinthians 4 this morning. You're welcome to come over there and join us. For verse 11, that was Romans 8, 35. Philippians chapter 4, verse 12. 2 Corinthians 11, 23 through 27. We looked at 2 Timothy 3, 11. 2 Corinthians 6, verses 4 through 5. 2 Corinthians 4, 8. That's what my granddaddy used to smoke, James. It's non-camel, non-filtered camel. Not my, not the reverend, but uh, my mom's dad. 2 Corinthians 4.8, 1 Corinthians 9.4, Job 22.6. That takes us down to verse 12, right? Verse 12, and labor, labor. We have no certain dwelling place and labor working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless, being persecuted, we suffer it. We suffer it. Right? How? Do, why? We know the truth. That's why we suffer it. They don't know the truth. That's why they're attacking it. Defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and the obscuring of all things unto this day. So back up to verse 12. That's Romans chapter 12, verse 20. Romans chapter 12, verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. You got grafted into something broken off? No. Remember, God's no respective person anymore. It didn't matter whether you were Jew or Gentile. God's making himself twain today. One new man. One new man. Neither Jew nor Gentile. Good morning, Jenny. Grace and peace to you, sister. Happy Friday to you. Listen, for the casting away of them, that's Israel, be the reconciling of the world, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Once Israel wakes up and comes to the knowledge of the truth, we're talking judgment day, life from the dead, put back into their bodies, and they stand before God, and he says, I never knew you. Or welcome, my humble and faithful servant. The body of Christ isn't present at that time. The body of Christ is way past the North Star, outside of the firmament, where we are judging the angels, okay? The casting away of them, meaning through the fall of Israel, everybody else had the opportunity to receive salvation. I did too, man, but I blocked it out. It was hard, but I blocked it out. I'm going to try to block it out. I try to block it out, but it plays again. See, that's, you know, every time Diddy plays that song, he's got to give that dude's thing $6,000 a day for that song, don't you? It's like, how do you make a song knowing that you paid somebody to take out your boy? Yep, fully equipped city changer with a sale. That was back in the 80s. It's an antique now. It ain't fully equipped no more. He lost his mojo, right? That's right, Tammy. Rock the bells. That's a good one. Rock the bells. Run DMC, if you don't know. Look it up. Run DMC, rock the bells. It's a good one. I like it. We're getting ready to be playing some Christmas caroling. Ba -ba -bum -bum. Ba -ba -bum -bum. Verse 13. That's Romans 12, verse 20. And I got Romans 12, verse 14 as well. Romans 12, verse 14. 
Bless them which persecute you. Bless and curse not. We should be praying for them. They're persecuting us because they just don't see what we see. God hasn't taken that veil from them yet. They're still caught up in man's wisdom, still caught up in tradition. They haven't actually sat down and studied the Bible out for themselves yet. Rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. I know our sister Jeanette's not really here with us anymore, guys, and some of y'all probably don't even know who she is. But I have a sister in Jeanette that I love dearly. It seems to be constantly going through something. And you see, the truth is I would love to be able to reach out to every single one of you guys and tell you that it's going to be okay. But I can't handle it. I can't deal with it. I can't deal with all of your problems. I have a hard enough time dealing with my own problems, let alone dealing with somebody else's problems. I just spoke with her the other day, Raymond. Uh, I guess her kid is uh, going through some things at school right now. And um, honestly, I know it's harsh, but this is where we men need to step up and be men. Be men. You know what I mean? Don't let your wife sit in there and deal with some kid. You go in there and tell that boy, hey, man, this whole life is about doing things that we don't want to do. I didn't want to do anything in my life, but I had to, right? I didn't want to go down to court to get my license, but I had to. Why? Because you wanted the license, so you went down there and did it. As you grow up, you're going to start having to do things that your parents aren't going to be there to hold your hand for anymore. And what you're actually going to find out is that you like going in and doing things by yourself. There's no one there to tell you what to do. All you need to do is conduct yourself in an orderly fashion and everything is going to be okay. You're like, man, it's nice being out here, all these people around me. You know, you got some people that can't go anywhere unless they have their little entourage. And then you got somebody like me that likes to go rogue just by himself. Here he is. Hey, what's up, man? All right, so that's Romans 12, 20, Romans 12, 14. Let's do 1 Thessalonians 2, 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9. For you remember, brethren, our labor and travail for laboring night and day because we would not be chargeable to any of you. We preached unto you the gospel of God. We wouldn't be chargeable. Remember I told y'all that, uh, what was that dude named Donnie Swagger was up there talking about we need a, we need a $10,000 donation. Wow, to even think that somebody's got $10,000 and just say, here, take this $10,000, I don't need it. Wow. You know what $10,000 could do for you? What it would do for me? What do you think $10,000 could do for the body of Christ? Maybe we could get Jimmy Swagger to sit down and shut up and let somebody that's qualified actually get up there and spread the message. At least then you could justify the $10,000 because the gospel of your salvation and eternal salvation and knowing that you're saved, there's nothing you could put a price on that at all. At least then they would be like, they didn't get ripped off. You mean I paid $10,000 and you teach me I could lose my salvation? Wow. 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 I don't think I want any parts of that, man. Stay over there in Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians is where we're going now. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse eight. Second Thessalonians chapter three, verse eight. Neither did we eat any man's bread for naught, but wrought with labor and travail night and day that we might not be chargeable to any of you. Your pastor's not working and he's capable of working. He's being chargeable to you. Are you paying a cell phone bill too? It's like you got a 14-year-old. You might as well pay his insurance, right? Not because we have not power, but to make ourselves an ensample for you to follow. An ensample. Danny's in the dirt. He's in the heat. He's in the cold. 
He's in the rain. He's in the snow. Men, we don't think. We just do. Why? Because we have to. And once you create that habit, no, I don't want to get up in the morning. Do I have to? No. But I do. Why? Because I won't feel right if I don't. So you got a choice to make. What are you going to do? Continue to keep searching for that truth. All right? So that's verse 12. Let's move down to verse 13. Being defamed. Defamed. You see them creating fake accounts? You know how we know we're winning? We won. We won. You know why? Because they got fake accounts. Winners don't have to make fake accounts. Okay? We've got the answers. They don't have the answers. That's why they're making fake accounts. What they do saying just don't make any sense to me. You mean Jesus Christ dying for the sins of the world before you were born don't make sense to you? Oh yeah, you're definitely blinded by Satan, aren't you? Right? The truth is, these people that are arguing with us haven't really put their time in. So some things just don't make sense to them. And they haven't been around the right people to teach them the right answers yet. And it's just going to take time. So somebody that might be disagreeing with me today, this time next year, would be agreeing with me. That's what we're hoping for those people that say, oh, we're the bride, we're the bride. No, we're not. No, we are not. There's no feminism going on over here. He's all talking tough. That's what we're doing. Talking tough. Not out there trying on dresses. Verse 13. Wow. Being defamed, we entreat. We are made the filth of the world and the obscuring of all things unto this day. Lamentations. I'm surprised I can even say that word. Lamentations. Chapter 3, verse 45. I've also got Acts. Acts 22, 22. Okay? She'll calm down in time, Andrew. That's how I was. My grandbaby's the same way. You got your hands full, brother. Take her out to a big soccer field somewhere and let her go, man. Just run, rock and run as fast as the wind blows. And that's what that little grandbaby of mine will run and run and run till the sun goes down. That's why I said, man, what I wouldn't give to have that kind of energy again. So for verse 13, that's Lamentations, chapter 3, verse 45, Acts 22, 22. That takes us down to verse 14. Verse 14, I write these things, I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Why do you think Paul's warning them? Because they're going to burn slam up at that judgment seat. Not only is he warning them about the judgment seat, he's warning them because the next time he shows up, he's going to use sharpness in his words. Okay, so for verse 14. I write not these things to shame you, but as my beloved sons, I warn you. Beloved sons, I warn you. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 15. For though you had 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. Fathers, for in Christ Jesus I have begotten you through the gospel. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers of me. All right, let's do 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Nope. 1 Corinthians 6, 5. 1 Corinthians 6, 5. I speak to your shame. It is so that there's not a wise man among you. If there's a female pastor, right? Right? She's got two options. If she's a female, that means she's carnal minded. She hasn't died to herself yet. She's more than likely still preaching the gospel of the kingdom. If she has died to herself, then she's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male or female, and she's preaching the same message that I'm preaching, and that's exactly what God has told us to do. Remember? Nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, or extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you are washed, but you are sanctified, but you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus by the Spirit of God. 
So that was uh, 1 Corinthians 6, 9 through 12. I'm sorry. Should have been 1 Corinthians 6, 5. 5 through 12. 1 Corinthians 6, 5 through 12. Do 1 Corinthians 9, verse 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15. But I have used none of these things. What things? It goes back over here to verse 12. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? Nevertheless, we have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder the gospel of Christ. Do you know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should live of the gospel. But I have used none of these things, and neither have I written these things, that it should be so done unto me. For if it were better for me to die than that any man should make my glory in void. For though I preach the gospel, I have nothing to glory of. For necessity is laid upon me. Woe is unto me if I preach not the gospel. For if I do this thing willingly, I have a reward. But if against my will, a dispensation of the gospel was committed unto me. What is my reward then? Verily, that when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I abuse not my power in the gospel. You're charging somebody to hear the gospel? You're abusing your power is what you're doing. I hate to see that guy stand at that judgment seat and have to tell the Lord that he charged somebody to hear his message. It'd be a bad day for that guy. We don't want your money. We want your time. Scripture says to redeem the time, to take back the days because they are evil. The days are evil, meaning that Satan is going to use this day to try to take your minds off of that finished work of Jesus Christ and put it on your modern day life. The outward man is perishing, right? Have you came to terms with that yet? You're going to die. How are people going to view you after you're gone? Will they remember you for the gospel? Will they remember you as a pillar? A beacon of light in the dark. Or are you going to be remembered like my great-great-grandparents was? He's just a drunk. That's all you can know about him is he was a drunk. Remember, you couldn't remember anything else about him other than he was a drunk. You didn't care enough about the great 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 grace that were coming after you to retain any amount of information from this guy. Why was he a drunk? What made him that way? What did they do to him? Show me on the doll where they touched you. All right, that's 1 Corinthians 9, 15. Let's do uh, 1 Corinthians 15. Go to the ribbon, verse 34. Awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. This was the problem with the 12. They were accusing Jesus of not teaching them. They were unlearned. That's why they were saying they weren't qualified to represent Jesus Christ. So 34, awake to righteousness and sin not, for some have not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame, but some man will say, how are the dead raised up and with what body do they come? You remember? Surely a man can't enter his mother's womb a second time, can he? Doesn't sound like Nicodemus was very educated, does it? Not now. First Corinthians chapter four. I warn you. Let's do, uh, I think we're good. I'm going to recap verse 14. First Thess chapter two, verse 11. That was first Corinthians six, five. Colossians one, 28. You're in depression. Okay. We'll start counting your blessings, brother. That was Colossians 1, 28. 1 Corinthians 9, 15. 
1 Corinthians 4, 15. 2 Corinthians 6, 11 through 13. We looked at 1 Corinthians 15, 34. Uh, 2 Corinthians 7, 3. And 1 Thess 5, 14. 2 Corinthians 7, 3. And 1 Thessalonians 5, 14. That takes us down to verse 15. Thank you, Renee. Thank you. For though you had 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet have ye not many fathers. Fathers, remember last night, where I can present you as a child's version. The body of Christ is being called up into the clouds to be one with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, though you had 10,000 instructors in Christ, yet, yet have not many fathers. For in Christ Jesus, I have begotten you through the gospel. Galatians 4, 19. Galatians chapter 4, verse 19. My little children of whom I travail in birth. Yeah, my little children. Of whom I travail in birth and again until Christ be formed in you. I desire to be present with you now and to change my voice for I stand in doubt of you. That would be like somebody going, Daniel! I was a little kid. They were like, Daniel. And I was like, nobody calls me Daniel. He got called Daniel. You know, you was in trouble. You have an anxiety. Okay. Well, you need to understand that things don't happen in your time. You need to understand that we are right on schedule. God's never late or early. Things happen in his time. You need to understand that you're blessed above all spiritual blessings and that you're seated in heavenly places with Christ. You are complete in Christ. There's nothing for you to be anxious about. How you destroy anxiety? Rejoice. Start thanking God for what you got. What destroys anxiety? Praise. Praise. Are you praising God? Always singing in your song, heart, song, hymns, psalms, making melody. You're another country, Uganda. You're starving with your little brothers. Hey, there's a girl over there named Ellen Musk. Have you heard of her? You think Ellen might be able to look out for y'all? Y'all need to find out where that chick lives at. Amen, Roxanne. Very good. I know, Matthew. Well, Conan, we're blessed. We're very blessed to have you here with us. So Paul says, my little children. Why? Because he has begotten us through the gospel. Through the gospel. To correctly follow Jesus Christ, you follow the apostle Paul. Why? Because Jesus Christ chose Paul to suffer. You didn't decide that. We didn't decide which apostle we followed. We're not from the 12 tribes of Israel. We are members of the body of Christ. Paul's not representing one of the 12, 12 tribes, even though he's from the tribe of Benjamin. Paul is representing the body of Christ. So go back to 1 Corinthians 4. That's Galatians 4.19. Let's do 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 10. 1 Corinthians 3.10. According to the grace of God, which is given unto me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another buildeth thereupon. Let every man take heed on how he buildeth thereupon. A master builder. That's somebody that has mastered their craft. Mastered it. Remember, could I be a carpenter in America and go over to Asia? Not Asia. Go over to China. And make one of them buildings with the curly things on the end of it, you know, and the dragons all in the wood and all that stuff. They got a lot more time invested into it than what we have over here in America. Over here in America, we're set up for mass mass production, you know what I mean? Or slap it together. They call them track houses, so to speak. Then they have track houses with different options. You know, that's not custom. Custom means this is what I want. So... Guess when you start riding by and you start noticing all the houses are the same. 
That's where we're heading toward. Socialism. You got to, uh, well, as a kid, you know, where a kid could be a kid, they took Toys R Us away from me. That means I couldn't go buy the cool G.I. Joes at Toys R Us. I had to go over to the Walmart and select from the four that I got to choose from. Just like the four shirts or the four pairs of pants. They got the four different kinds of shoes. You have a choice, but it's limited is what it is. Limited. So 1 Corinthians 4, 10,000 instructors. Until you give Paul the authority that was given to him by Jesus Christ, you're going to be tossed to and fro. Okay? It reminds me of that movie with Bill Murray in it. Groundhog Day. It was like every day. He woke up. First Corinthians 3.10. Uh, let's do 1 Corinthians 9. 1 Corinthians 9, 23 and 18. We seem to be staying there. Did we just read that? 1 Corinthians 9, verse 18. What is my reward then? Verily, when I preach the gospel, I may make the gospel of Christ without charge, that I may not use my power in the gospel. Without charge. So that's 914, 918. Yeah. I think we did that already. But it's okay. There's nothing wrong with repetition. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. 2 Timothy 4, verse 3. Second Timothy four, verse three, for the time will come. That will come. That means it's in the future. They will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. See, I think this is projected for the trib, but with Satan hiding his time of grace, it's actually happening today. People turn their ears away from the truth. And shall be turned to fables. Why? Because they heap to themselves teachers. Have it at your ears. Do I sound anything like Joel Osteen at all? Am I anything like Kenneth Copeland? At all? What's the difference between me and them? A lot of money. And the truth. So for a lot of money, they let the truth go. Right. That's why Dr. Ruckman said, if you want your ministry to be successful, you need to preach the gospel the same way everybody else is preaching the gospel. That's according to the 55,000 denominations. If you want your message to be beneficial to God, then you preach Christ crucified, and that's where you're not going to find favor with man. So you got two choices. You can please God or please man. You see, we're pleasing God. Man doesn't like it, but what can they do about it? Nothing. We're correcting those who oppose themselves. They don't know the answers. They're caught up in tradition. So why haven't they been taught right? Well, the easiest answer is because they didn't ever search it out. You think you're going to find the truth right up in the street at the end of the 7-Eleven? I had to go all the way to West Virginia. I had to drive six hours there just to hear the truth or what I thought the truth was at the time. How far are you willing to go for the truth. Even if everybody turns their back on you, would you still continue to search for the truth? What if you knew the truth and then somebody else was trying to take it away from you? Well, Raymond, they don't have the family that we have, brother. That's what it is. It's the love. The glue. They don't got the glue. We got that gorilla glue. They got Elmer's. Elmer was a FUD. That gorilla glue. You seen that gorilla up there? He was, <laughs> you can't get that gorilla glue off. Nope. You ever had a gorilla grab on you? That's what I would have made my vice grips. I wouldn't have called them vice grips. I would have called them gorilla grips. I need a gorilla to grab on this thing. Come here, gorilla. Take this bolt off. You had a gorilla, you wouldn't need a jack. He could just lift your car up. Right. You got to get the monkey off your back, Kim. So what you do, sis, until Tuesday... You start preparing is what you do. 
talking to yourself in the car, talking to yourself in your brain, in your head. And I'm going to be honest with you. Satan's going to attack you. He's going to have you discouraged. He's going to do everything he can to keep you from wanting to deliver the message. The only way to start it is to open your mouth and let it go. It is strong, Conan. That's where we use the Gorilla Glue now, Gorilla Subfort Glue. <laughs> you ain't lying, Nate. That's where we got a 1911 over here. Like, say hello to the bright light. Look at the light. Look at the light, Carol Ann. Flash. All right. So we got Titus 1 4, and then we got Philemon. Titus 1 4, we probably looked at Titus. I'm probably sidetracked, but it's okay. That's why, even if you do get sidetracked, what are you doing? Over and over and over again, you're creating repetition, is what you are. Titus chapter 1, verse 4. Was that it? Yep. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith. You see that? Titus was also a member of the body of Christ. That's my boy. Remember, he wasn't compelled to be circumcised. He said, you stick it where the sun don't shine. I know circumcision or uncircumcision availed anything but the new creature. The new creature. Remember the verse before, verse 3, but has in due times manifested his word through preaching, which is committed unto me according to the commandment of God our Savior. There's no if, ands, or buts about it. And this is where I get upset. Every single day, we are magnifying the finished work of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'm hoping and praying that somehow or another, that God's going to wake my family up. Let's do Philemon 119. I, Paul, have written it with my own hand. I will repay it. Albeit, I do not say to thee how thou owest unto me, even thy own self. Well, this is a different situation in itself. Philemon was a runaway slave. Philemon got locked up with Paul. Philemon was converted while he was in jail. So Paul was telling the slave master, whatever Philemon owes you, charge it to me. But I won't talk about what you owe me. Because without Paul, you never would have heard about this time of grace. You never would have heard that you were bought and paid for. Without Paul, you would have thought you were some Gentile still alienated from Christ. So what do we do? We forgive because we are forgiven. We continue to keep pressing on that faith, that hope, that charity. That's what's important. Charity, guys. To love your neighbor as you love yourself. That's going to take out the side streets. That's going to take out the motives. Right? We don't want you to get caught up in all those nonsense that I got caught up in. We want you to come straight to the truth. Get on that interstate. Hit that cruise control. And I'll see you in the clouds. That's where the police officer said, you know, one of the most important things he ever made on the car was cruise control. I said, oh, man. He's right. <laughs> See those lights going off back there? Whoop, whoop, whoop. What are you going to do? But remember this Bambino in the car with a cougar. What do you think a policeman is going to do when he sees a cougar sitting next to you? That's where you have to just say sometimes, you just got me. You got me, man. Man, you got me. Old Deputy Fife ain't had nothing better to do. Could have been watching Netflix. But no, you're over here staring at old man trying to go to work. Right? Leave a working man alone. That's Philemon 119. And then let's look at Philemon 10 and 12. I beseech thee for my son Onesimus of whom I have begotten in my bonds. Begotten in bonds, in jail, right? Which in times past was to thee, that's Onesimus, unprofitable. Not Onesimus, that's Philemon. Unprofitable. But now profitable to thee and me. To not just the, the slave owner, but to God. I 
All right, let's recap verse 15. That was a lot. Galatians 4, 19. 1 Corinthians 3, 10. First Corinthians 9, 23. First Corinthians 9, 14 through 18. That was Titus 1, 4. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 3. We looked at Philemon 119 and Philemon 10 through 12. That takes us down to verse 16 of First Corinthians chapter 4. Wherefore I beseech you, be ye followers of me. First Corinthians chapter 1, verse 11. For it has been declared unto me of you, my brethren, by them which are of the house of Chloe, that there are contentions among you. Contentions. Will there be contentions if you follow Paul? No. There'll be unity. There'll be knowledge. There'll be so that we may present every man perfect in Christ at that judgment seat. First Corinthians 1 11. Let's do Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Philippians chapter 3, verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me and mark them which walk so as you have us for an example. You see that? For many walk of whom I have told you often and I'll tell you even weeping that they are enemies of the cross of Christ whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly, whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. For our conversation is in heaven. From hence we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body according to the work and whereby he is even able to subdue all things to himself. What jumped out that time? The vile body. The vile body. The one that religion is trying to perfect. We need to change our vile body. You see it? Vile. Why? It's vanity. Everything is vanity. For the knowledge and wisdom of Jesus Christ. So stay in Philippians. Let's go to chapter 4 and look at verse 9. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. But I rejoice in the Lord greatly that that now your last care of me had flourished again, wherein you were also careful, but you lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. Content. We're not late. We're not early. We're right on schedule. Meg, you're going to be late today, honey, if you don't get ready. You can't just sit there and look at me all day. It's Friday. You know what that means? We got 16 days. We got to get this Friday on and get it over with. Hopefully it'll fly by, right? How does it fly by? You got to stay busy, right? Stay busy. If you don't stay busy, it seems like a long day. 6.35, we got all day, don't we, Conan? 35, 45, 55, 65, 75. We almost got a dollar. <laughs> all right, so verse 17. Wherefore, I beseech you, be ye followers. Verse 16. I beseech you, be ye followers of me. That's Philippians 3.17. Philippians 4.9. And 1 Corinthians 1.11. 1 Corinthians 1 11, all right? That takes us down to verse 17. For this cause, I have sent unto you Timotheus, who is my beloved son and faithful in the Lord, who shall bring into you remembrance of my ways, which be in Christ, as I teach everywhere in every church. Everywhere in every church, right? It's a lot here again. Why I insist on doing this to myself. So what you do is you glance through your cross-reference verses. You're trying to find verses that are in the same chapter, right? So, for example, we're in chapter 4, so I'm looking for cross-references that are in chapter 4. If I don't see anything that's in chapter 4, I'm looking for anything that's in Corinthians at all. If there's nothing else that's in Corinthians, then I'm going with the same author. Where else did Paul talk about these things that he's mentioned here, okay? Well, Paul might have been talking about it over here. 
right? So you say, okay, well, I can't find anything in, in the same chapter, but what about in the same book? 1 Corinthians 7, 17. 1 Corinthians 7, 17. But as God has distributed to every man, as the Lord has called everyone, so let him walk and so ordain I in all churches. Is any man being called circumcised? Let him become, let him not become uncircumcised. Is any man in circumcision? Let him not be uncircumcised. What is he saying? I might have read it wrong. I might have confused you by reading that. If you're circumcised, don't worry about being uncircumcised. If you're uncircumcised, don't worry about being circumcised. Basically, right? We're praying for your mom too, Jen. You know, we're going to have it for about the next 10 years or so. All of us are going to be going through it. Maybe 10 to 15 years. I think most of us that are our age will be losing our parents. If we don't start losing each other as well. But hopefully I will rejoice when another one makes it. Just get home, guys. That's what's important. So we said 1 Corinthians 7, 17. 877 cash now, right? God has distributed. Grace is a gift from God. He gave it to every man as the Lord has called everyone to let him walk. And so I, ordained I in all churches. Paul is given the pattern, right? Well, that's where you just spend as much time with them as you can, brother. You spend as much time with them as you can. You let them know that you love them and that you're gonna be okay. We got big shoes to fill. We got a lot of people to make proud. All right, that's 1 Corinthians 7, 17. Let's do 1 Corinthians 16, 10. 1 Corinthians 16, 10. 16. 1 Corinthians 16, 10. Now, if Timothy has come, see that he may be with you without fear. For he worketh the work of the Lord as I also do. Let no man therefore despise him, but conduct him forth in peace that he may come unto me, for I look for him with the brethren. As touching our brother Apollos, I greatly desired him to come with you all, with all the brethren, but his will was not at all to come at this time, but he will come when he shall have the convenient time. We don't know if Apollo's parents were passing away. What was Apollo's deal, dealing with? But Apollo said as soon as he could get free, he would, he would come help. So 1 Corinthians chapter 4, that's uh, 1 Corinthians 16, 10. We skipped that one. I, I skipped that one. 1 Corinthians 7, 25. Let's do Ephesians 6, 21. Put on that armor of God. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 21. What? but that ye also may know my affairs and how through no, and how I do. Titus, a beloved brother and faithful in the minister of the Lord, shall make none un known unto you all things. Why could I just go read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John? Because we're talking about Christ in you, the hope of glory. This was kept secret at the time of Jesus Christ and his earthly ministry. 1 Corinthians 2, 8, if the rulers and the princes of this world would have known about this mystery, they never would have crucified the Lord of glory. Let's do 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2. Thank you, Steve. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. I wish I would have stopped. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 1. Verse 2, to Timothy, my dearly beloved son, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and Christ Jesus our Lord. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. But thou hast fully known my doctrine, manner of life, purpose, faith, long-suffering, charity, patience, persecutions, afflictions, which came unto me at Antioch and Iconian at Lystra, and what persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. But thou hast fully known my doctrine. You got 55,000 denominations that are completely ignorant to Paul's doctrine. That's not okay. 
It's not okay today. It's not going to be okay at the judgment seat. You got 55,000 denominations that claim that they love God that's going to burn slam up at that judgment seat. Just like Janice and Jamers withstood Moses, right? Moses put his staff on the ground. Janice and Jamers put their staffs on the ground. They were trying to jump Moses' staff is what they were doing. And Moses roundhouse both of them. You got God, you're victorious. So what we're going to do is stop right here. We're going to recap verse 17. Okay? Verse 17. Let's do 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2. 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 2. 1 Corinthians 16, 10. 1 Corinthians 7, 17. Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 2 and 3. Colossians chapter 4, verse 9. We looked at Ephesians chapter 6, verse 21. I forgot this one. 1 Corinthians 7, 25. Philippians chapter 2, verse 19. I don't know if I told you these or not. 2 Timothy 3.10 and 2 Timothy 2.2. 2. All right. And what that does, guys, that sets us up right back for tomorrow. We're going to pick right back up here in verse 17 tomorrow. Verse 17, Saturday morning, 5 o'clock, guys. We're still up partying from the night before. Come on over. Party with us as we go through this Bible. I hope and pray everybody has a fantastic Friday. Uh, this afternoon, you should see Kat and Tammy maybe. I'm not sure if Tammy's going to go live um, during the daytime today or not. But I think our brother Nate here should be going live sometime right around 8 o'clock. And he's just going to be reading scriptures. I'm going to tell you guys, if we can fulfill ourselves with the Lord as much as possible, that's going to help us when it comes time to battle Satan. You don't want Satan to battle you, do you? No, we battle Satan, right? We put on the armor of God. We stand behind the righteousness of Jesus Christ is what we do. It's kind of like... You know, that dude running his mouth out there. Very good, Daryl Walter. I didn't know you knew that. Boogity, 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 boogity. He had to turn it up, right? Turn it up! Conan, you stay safe, brother. All right? Chaos. Keep your head up. Steven, we love you. It's good to see you, brother. I didn't know you were in here. Emma, sister. Was you here the whole time? See, uh, I got a brother Ryan over there that I want to see if I can't link up with her. I believe she's in Africa as well. I'm not sure where at in Africa, but just like Preacher John said, we're having a hard time sending Bibles over to Africa. What they keep doing is taking them. What did I done sent like four or five uh, visitor packs to Ryan with a bunch of dispensational charts in them, and none of them ever showed up. Uh, so they obviously don't value uh, the mailing system, the mailing system like we do. Um, God's got a way, guys. He's got the right ones. So we continue to keep each other in our prayers. Continue to keep keep pressing on. All right? Don't give up. Justin, grace and peace to you, brother. I love you all in Christ. See you guys tomorrow. Y'all take care.